death sentence or death penalty is a punishment sanctioned by the state, where the person is killed for committing the offense. The act of carrying out such a sentence is known as an execution. While the mode of execution adopted differs from nation to nation, India retained the 1861 Penal Code at Independence in 1947, which provided for the death penalty for murder. The idea of abolishing the death penalty expressed by several members of the Constituent Assembly during the drafting of the Indian Constitution between 1947 and 1949. But no such provision was incorporated in the Constitution. In the next two decades, to abolish the death penalty, private members' bills were introduced in both Lok Sabha and Rajya Sabha but none of them were adopted. It was estimated that between 1950 and 1980, there were 3,000 to 4,000 executions. It is more difficult to measure the number of people sentenced to death and executed between 1980 and the mid-1990. It is estimated that two or three people were hanged annually. In the 1980 Bachchan Singh judgment, the Supreme Court ruled that the death penalty should only be used in the rarest of rare cases, but it is not clear what defines the rarest of the rare. Hanging and shooting are the two methods of death penalty in India. According to the Criminal Procedure Code, hanging is the method of execution in the civilian court system. The Army Act, 1950, however, lists both hanging and shooting as official methods of execution in the military court-martial system. Crimes punishable by death in India include aggravated murder, other offenses resulting in death, terrorism-related crimes resulting in death, terrorism-related cases not resulting in death, rape not resulting in death, kidnapping not resulting in death, drug trafficking not resulting in death, treason, espionage and military offenses not resulting in death. The death penalty is a legal punishment in India, and is permissible for some crimes under the country's main substantive penal legislation, the Indian Penal Code, 1860, as well as other laws. Currently, there are around 403 prisoners on death row in India. The most recent executions in India took place in March 2020, when the four men convicted of the gang rape and murder of Jyoti Singh in Delhi in December 2012 were hanged in the Tahar prison complex in Delhi. In the Code of Criminal Procedure 1898 death was the default punishment for murder, and required the concerned judges to give reasons in their judgment if they wanted to give life imprisonment instead. By an amendment to the CRPC in 1955, the requirement of written reasons for not imposing the death penalty was removed reflecting no legislative preference between the two punishments. In 1973, when the CRPC was amended further, life imprisonment became the norm and death penalty was to be imposed only in exceptional cases and required special reasons. This significant change indicated a desire to limit the imposition of the death penalty in India. The CRPC, 1973 also bifurcated a criminal trial into two stages with separate hearings, one for conviction and another for sentencing. The first challenge to the capital punishment in India came during the 1973 case of Jag Mohan Singh v. State of UP, October 1972. The judgment came before the CRPC was re-enacted in 1973, whereby the death sentence constituted an exceptional sentence. 
it was argued that the death penalty violates to the right to life and equality and guaranteed by the Indian Constitution. Moreover, the uncontrolled and unguided arbitrary discretion in the judges to impose capital punishment violates Article 14 of the Indian Constitution and the petitioners contended that the procedure for consideration of circumstances in order to pronounce finding and reasoning to make judicial decision between capital punishment and life imprisonment is not available under CRPC 1898 therefore it violated article 21 of the Indian Constitution however the Supreme Court of India refused to accept the argument and held that the death sentence is pronounced after detailed recording and evaluation of the aggravating and mitigating circumstances. Thus such procedure justifies the imposition of capital punishment and does not violate Article 21 of the Indian Constitution. Moreover, the criticism of judge-centric or wide discretion on the judges on the fixation of the punishment is subject to the scrutiny of the superior judges and premised on the well-recognized judicial principles. The judgment also discussed the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Furman v. Georgia, October 1971 where the U.S. Supreme Court struck down the death sentence scheme as it violated the Eighth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, as being cruel and unusual punishment. But, the Supreme Court of India refused to accept the reasoning and stated that there is no rational basis for concluding the death sentence as unconstitutional because the Indian Constitution does not have an equivalent to the Eighth Amendment. Since the incorporation of Code of Criminal Procedure, 1898, while imposing the death sentence, the courts were obliged to provide special reasons for not imposing the death sentence. The true departure from death sentence as a norm to an exception came after the introduction of Code of Criminal Procedure re enacted in 1973. The CRPC 1973 introduced Section 354, the section mandated that judge must provide special reasons for inflicting or imposing the death sentence. Also. The CRPC 1973 introduced the Section 235, which allowed the post-conviction hearing on sentencing, which drastically changed the jurisprudence, allowing a careful evaluation and analysis of circumstances revolving around the jurisprudence of death sentence. The abolition of the death penalty has been a debatable question all across and has been called upon for discussion in various international forums. According to the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, capital punishment has been regulated as one part of right to life in the International Human Rights Treaty. The Covenant does not abolish death penalty. But under Article 6 it states that death sentence may be imposed only for most serious crimes, in accordance with the law and other provisions in the Covenant. Further the convict sentenced with death shall have right to seek pardon or commutation of sentence and death sentence cannot be imposed on a person below 18 years of age or pregnant women. The Convention on the Rights of the Child also lays down provisions on similar lines stating that no child can be subjected to torture or other cruel treatment such as life imprisonment without possibility of release. The Convention Against Torture and Cruel, Inhuman or Degrading Treatment or Punishment or the Torture Convention itself does not declare death penalty as torture or cruel inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, but addresses the methods of execution and the process of death row. Among the mentioned treaties and conventions, 
India has ratified the ICCPR and CRC and is only a signatory of the Torture Convention. But according to Article 18 of the Vienna Convention on the Laws of Treaties the state is bound to refrain from acts which would defeat the purpose of a treaty. Under the Domestic Laws, the Protection of Human Rights Act, 1994 in Section 2 states that, human rights means the rights relating to life, liberty, equality and dignity of the individual guaranteed by the Constitution or embodied in the international covenants and enforceable by courts in India. For a convict to file a mercy petition, his or her death sentence must be confirmed by a high court first. The law says, the death sentence convict has an option to appeal to the Supreme Court. If the Supreme Court either refuses to hear the appeal or upholds the death sentence, then the convict or his relatives can submit a mercy petition to the President of India or the Governor of the state. Grounds to seek mercy appeal range from physical fitness, age, law was too harsh, or the convict is the sole breadwinner of the family. According to Article 72 of the Constitution of India, the power to pardon, philosophy of which is every civilized country recognizes and provides for the pardoning power as an act of grace and humanity in course of law lies with the President. The article also states that he or she can grant pardons, reprieves, respites or remissions of punishment or to suspend, remit or commute the convict. The mercy petition is reviewed by the Ministry of Home Affairs, which consults the state involved, before going to the President. The powers of the Governor of State are very similar to that of the President. According to Article 161 of the Indian Constitution, the Governor can grant pardons, reprieves, respites or remissions of punishment or to suspend, remit or commute the sentence of any person convicted of any offense against, any law relating to a matter to which the executive power of the state extends. Prisons and other government departments don't have accurate records of the number of persons executed in India. This fact speaks to larger concerns with data on the criminal justice system in India. When the country doesn't even have the records of the number of people on whom it has imposed the highest punishment under law in India. Thank you for watching Death Row.